Hi, my name is Ari Simmons, Community Energy Specialist for South Sound Solar, and welcome to Solar Lifestyles. Solar Lifestyles is a docu-series where we talk to customers of South Sound Solar about how they're incorporating sustainability into their lives and into the community. Today, we're meeting with Jeff Farrington of Skydive Kapausen in Shelton, Washington at both his home and business. We're in for an action-packed day, so let's get started. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Ari. How are you I'm today? I'm great. How All are you? Right. Just living the dream. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful here. Thank you so much for having us today. You betcha. Well, we're excited to talk some solar with you and okay. learn more about your home and more about your business and how it all comes together. Show us what you got. All right. Well, years ago, we decided to put panels on. Uh, I think we were the first people in PUD3. Awesome. Is this your main array? There's some on the east side also to catch the morning sun. Yeah, so what inspired you to put solar on your home? To be frank, there was uh, very good rebates and stuff like that. Our business, I don't mind telling anybody, um, we use a lot of fossil fuels and just trying to give a little bit back to the community and even the world at this time. When I went to PUD3 to ask them about it, they said, what are you, crazy? We have the lowest electric rates in the whole country. We have to get more to uh, wind, solar, uh, renewable energy. Yeah, can you speak a little bit to your savings? Have you net zeroed? I don't think we're quite net zero yet. Uh, at the business, we had a, our last August bill was $32 instead of 450 I think we're scheduled to be completely paid off in 10 years. We do have a uh, federal income tax, the ITC, which allows homeowners to write off about 26% off of their residential solar array. So that is an incentive that people definitely should take advantage of if they're thinking about going solar or expanding their current systems. Well, and that's what I tell people. There's uh, lots of incentives to do it. I would still say most people are attracted to that kind of thing, uh, even when they're buying a house because it's not a new outlay of money to them. So if it's already there, you know, with a warranty and all that good stuff, they're willing to pay a little bit more. Appraisers are a little bit more likely to give you what you're asking for. And I, I think it's very valuable. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for all of these insights and inviting us to your beautiful home. Let's go check out your business and all see right. what you got going on We're there. We're ready to go. That's where the action is going to be. All right, well, we're here at Skydive Kapausen. Jeff, tell us a little bit about this place. Where are we? How did this place come to be? But we came from the little town of Kapausen, where my wife and myself bought 200 acres of land and built a residential air park. Uh, tandem skydiving wasn't invented yet, so we didn't have the mass number of people that were coming out to get a taste of skydiving and see what the sky is like. I would say we outgrew the residential air park. Shelton here, Sanderson Field, pretty much welcomed us with open arms. It's gorgeous. It, it really, really is. Yeah, about how many jumpers come through Kapausen in a year? Well, I believe last year we made a total of 37,000 jumps. And that doesn't include the military. Um, we get people from Europe all the time. Our regular customer base is from Vancouver, British Columbia, non-COVID, and Portland, Spokane, um, pretty much all of Washington and Northern Oregon. It must be really cool to see mom yeah. and dad get on an airplane yep, and jump out. Yeah, mom and dad out. are getting on the airplane. That's what's happening. 
dumped on the trailer and head out to load the next one. Oh, that's so awesome. Let's talk a little bit about COVID-19, because I know that's had some impact on a lot of small businesses, especially, you know, in rural communities. When it first came out in March, we were closed for, I think, probably three months. But at the time, we were very fortunate that we did have military contracts because they were on restrictions also where they couldn't travel to some of their normal uh, jump sites. Well, I'm glad COVID hasn't been too detrimental on your business operations. It certainly seems like skydiving is a way to unleash some tension and feel <laughs> yep, a little bit of freedom sure. in, this, in this world that we're living in right now. That people cooped up uh, want to get out. And again, when you're falling at 120 miles an hour through the sky, I'd like to see one of those little bugs hang on to you. Well, let's talk a little bit about how skydiving works because a lot of our viewers are probably not too familiar with the process. And pretty much there's two ways to make your first jump. One is the tandem skydive. I would say that's what most people do on their first one, just to get an introduction to skydiving. We take you back, put a harness on you, uh, tighten it up, get it adjusted, and then give you a briefing on what we expect you to do. And at about 11,000 feet, the instructor hooks the student up at four attachment points each one of those is rated at 5,000 pounds. So the pilot uses a GPS to select an opening point based on the winds aloft and all that good stuff. He turns on a green light. Uh, people in the back of the airplane open up the door and then we start moseying toward the door. And I would say at that time is when people say, I'm not sure I can do this. How do I get roped into this deal? You do what the instructor said, leave his hands alone so he can deploy the parachute in a timely manner. Uh, you arch, get in a good body position that you were instructed on prior. I'm falling at 120 miles an hour and I feel like I'm on a cushion of air. And then after about 50 seconds of free fall, the instructor taps you on your shoulder and says, please bring your hands in. That's the instruction that you had. So he can uh, deploy the parachute. And at about 5,000 feet, you have a fully open parachute. And then when we're coming in for landing, pretty much uh, we ask you to pick your feet up in front of you. So the instructor's feet will actually touch down first. And I would say on most days, we kind of slide in on our uh, the instructor's bottom. Okay. It just makes it, instead of a four-legged race, you can just kind of slide in and have a nice soft landing. Awesome. And about how long are you in the air? 60 seconds of free fall, five to seven minutes and under canopy. Okay. And do you have control over how long that five to seven minutes lasts at all? Um, or are you just kind of taxing? Not a whole lot. There's lots of people that like to do spins under the parachute, that makes your time last far less because you have the parachute facing the ground at a certain amount of time. Then the other method of learning to skydive is called accelerated free fall. Uh, that's where you go to a five hour class and you learn the basics of flying the parachute and your own body position and stuff like that. And then you'll make a jump that day, also from 13,000 feet, but you'll have two in-air instructors with you and you have your own parachute on. They have a series of hand signals that they can give you, arch a little more, and that keeps you basically face to earth, and then pull. <laughs> if you forget to do that, they are also able to 
pull for you. Typically, I mean, we're getting so many people coming out, making three jumps their first day in the summertime, five the second day. It certainly seems that this is an industry that can, is continuously growing. You have a very specific and unique model of incorporating solar to offset some of your fossil fuel usage for the airplanes. Can you talk a little bit more about that and how solar has really changed your business? We just kind of felt that having solar panels and being an example for businesses in the area and trying to give back a little bit when we can. Uh, I think it's part of being a good citizen. Yeah, It is certainly a, almost a vision to think about having solar paired with electrified airplanes so that the whole business could work in symbiosis with the thing that powers us all, the sun. That's right. And I really appreciate you taking the first steps to really make that connection and, and fuse these two industries together in a really cool way. Jeff, it was amazing interviewing you and having the opportunity to see your operations here. I'm certainly inspired to skydive and I hope the viewers are also inspired, inspired to come here and skydive as well because it's such a cool place. We think so. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was amazing meeting you and hope that we can stay in touch. All right. Be sure to check out our first episode of Solar Lifestyles right here and click over here to see our short interview series, Solar Lifestyles Extended, right up here. Thanks so much. We'll see you in the next one.